So the American pagan holiday known as the Super Bowl has come and gone. And of course, it couldn't do so without any controversy, could it? Absolutely not. This year's brouhaha, though, was about someone that you and I both know very intimately, and that is Jesus Christ. So during the Super Bowl, a Christian organization ran a spot called He Gets Us. And it featured images of people washing the feet of others in charity in the way that Jesus Christ has done in the Bible. Who would have thought that a one minute video would have sent everything and everyone into complete pandemonium, epic meltdowns, crying fits, arguments online, and more. So I went back and I watched the video. And I gotta say, I have a different perspective than what a lot of other people are seeing over here in our Christian and Catholic space. And I wanna talk about that today. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so right now and smash that like button. So let's first go back for a second and let's take a look at this actual video. Let's take a look at what all the hoopla is all about. So this one minute campaign ran during the commercials, big old Super Bowl commercials, and it flashed these images, which look like they're AI generated, but they're not. They're actually photographs from a famous photographer whose name I don't know right now, and I'll put it down on the bottom here to shout that person out. But it displays a set of people. On one side, you have the Christian washing the foot of a sinner. So let's go ahead and check that out. I'm going to cut off the music because we don't need any copyright strikes here. I'm putting my own sounds, okay? But let's go ahead and check out the entire commercial. So this first still is of a young man with colored hair, tattoos, and he's sitting at the foot of his father washing his feet. It looks like a family gathering. Mother's in the background setting the table. Got like a sister, I would suppose would be his sister on the other side, looking kind of solemn and somber. And then it cuts to the next slide, which is a police officer washing the feet of a man in an alleyway. You have the cop on his knees washing their feet. In this next one, we have a high school with a girl with color hair. She looks like she's sitting on the side of the outcast and her feet is being washed by a young girl who's probably like the popular cheerleader, pretty girl type of a student. And she's sitting there washing the feet of the supposed outcast. In this next one, we have two men. One looks like a guy who's like Native American or so. The other guy looks like a white American and they're out in the plains kind of thing or out in the desert somewhere and he's washing his feet. They both have off their boots and you've got the, the man washing the feet of that Native American man. In this next one, we have a young girl in front of a baby deletion clinic and you have a side of protesters there and one woman who's among the protesters, she has her sign on the floor. She's washing the feet of the young girl who was probably going to go ahead and get her baby deleted. In this next scene, we have a young woman hugging an older woman. We could assume perhaps she's a relative. She could be her mother. They're surrounded by squalor. And obviously there's probably some kind of an air of addiction or some kind of mental Ill illness that's happening with this woman. And she is washing her feet. In this next scene, we have what looks like an environmentalist. Like she's probably like a protester and a guy who's like working in the oil fields. You see the oil rigs in the back there. And he's kneeling down, washing the feet of this woman who's probably a, you know, vegan eating protester. <laughs> Why'd I have to go there? Because y'all know I'm doing the vegetarian thing right now. But anyway, let's go back. So in this one, we have an image of, this is one I thought was really interesting. We've got two mothers, right? A young mother holding a baby. And she's obviously an immigrant coming off of a bus. And the bus says Chicago. So they must have dropped them off but from the border you know, DeSantis sent them up there from Florida. So he dropped them off in Chicago and they're in the suburbs. And you've got this woman here who's sitting at the foot of this migrant washing her feet. 
And there's a very interesting correlation between all of these folks that I'm going to talk about in the moment that I think really got a lot of Christians upset. And in the next scene, we've got this woman. We have a couple, actually, a Muslim woman, woman sitting down, having her feet washed by a Christian woman, we would assume. And her husband is sitting there in the background. Both men are looking on. That's an interesting thing right here, too. Like Christian sitting here washing the feet of a Muslim woman. And in this slide, we've got two sets of protesters. And the sign says something like, he said, blah, 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 blah. So we can assume that they were like, let's say, opposing political parties. And between the two of them, two young women sitting in the midst of all this chaos, one washing the feet of the other. I thought this was a very touching slide as well. So we have two men sitting on a porch around the same age with both of their feet in that tub. So it's kind of like they're having like a moment of connection. It looks like their hands are touching and both of their feet are in that bucket. And it kind of reminds me of like, perhaps this is like somewhere in the American South where they were having racial tensions between these men and their experiences growing up. And there seems to be like a solace and a, tr a truce between them. I could be filling in all of that context that ain't really there, but that's what I see when I, listen, art is interpreted. That is what I see, okay? Let's go ahead to the next slide. And this one is probably one of the most controversial slides, okay? So we gotta go back to that because that went by real quick. You saw how they did that? This is the one that I think a lot of people went crazy over too. So you have this pastor or priest, however you wanna see him, sitting down in what looks like Venice, California, because that looks just like the shores of our beaches here. You got the guy sitting on the bench who who's in a effeminate kind of pose. Obviously, he's part of the queer community. He's got the roller skates on the side and he's having his feet washed by this Christian pastor. So then that's when they went off with the word. So let's see what they got to say after this. <laughs> okay. So Jesus didn't teach hate. He washed feet. <laughs> he gets us, all of us. And then says Jesus, and it has the, uh, you know, love your neighbor, which is the name of the campaign. So that is the controversy right there over that specific spot, all of those images. So let's talk about this for a moment. And you know, if the if the hoopla behind this is actually warranted, what are they trying to say? You know me, I, I got to research before I say anything, before I form an opinion. I like to be fully informed. So I did what the creators of this commercial intended for everyone to do, which is to go to the website and to read further. And what I saw when I got there was just an explanation of each of the slides, what was going on and what the reasoning behind their message is the story of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples appears in the gospel of John. And it happened right before the last supper. It was such a powerful moment. Think about this for a moment. Jesus Christ, the God man, who was the word made flesh, who dwelt among us, lowered himself to be one of us, to save us. We see him washing the feet of his disciples in John chapter 13, every single one of them, including Judas the sinner, who he knew betrayed him, who he knew was the one that would usher in his death. He did not turn him away. What a powerful sign, right? What a powerful symbol. I want to read the words of Christ before I go into my own opinions about this. And I want to skip over to John chapter 13, around verse 12. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them, you call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. That was the premise of that commercial. But what happens oftentimes with many Christians and even further for our audience, many Catholics, 
We have a tendency to gatekeep our faith. On the one hand, we want to see people celebrating and we want to welcome them back into the fold or just welcome them to the fold if this is for their first time. But we often can't see past our own biases about people. The fact that these images cause so much of a stir and an uproar really questions whether or not people understand the words of Christ and what he's expecting of us. Do you know how hard it is to love your enemy? Do you know how hard it is to extend a hand to those that you do not agree with? Do you know how hard it is to humble yourself in order to see others without judgment? Now, that is not to say that we condone sin. And I don't even think that the commercial was saying any of that to condone sin. But in order to meet people where they are, you kind of have to see them for who they are in all their flaws and still be willing to preach the word of God to them unbiased. I can sit here and say that as someone who is in complete apostasy at one point. Now, I've never denied God's existence. I have never given up my faith. But there was a point, you all know, that I was not practicing my faith. I was not going to Mass. I was not receiving the sacraments. I was not reading my Bible. I was not praying every day. I was lukewarm at best, a complete sino at worst. But I found my way back to the Lord. I came to him when I was completely broken spiritually and needing him, craving him, seeing that the things that the world promised me were lies. They would never fulfill me. Deciding to shun away the material world, to stop believing in the lies of Satan, to stop giving into my vices, to hold up a mirror to myself and see where I have wronged my Lord. I was on the other side of those people who were having their feet washed. If I was shunned and turned away by my faith community because I did not show up looking like the package of Catholicism that they have in their mind, man, I'd still be out there in the world. Who was this commercial for? Who was the audience? It wasn't for people like you and I. It was for people who were out there lost in the world who were looking for him. And if this is one thing that will help to open the conversation, then let it be what it is. Now, apparently the folks who funded this are the same folks who are in some way related to Hobby Lobby. But if you know anything about Hobby Lobby, there was a landmark case here in the United States Supreme Court that ruled that Hobby Lobby in any kind of organization that's tied to any kind of religious identity or if the CEOs, the founders have anything to do with their beliefs as a part of how they serve the people, that they are allowed to stand on their faith and refuse to serve the public because they are privately held companies. These same financiers were also some of the ones responsible for backing and funding the case of Dobbs, which overturned Roe versus Wade. And there are a bunch of other things that they've lobbied for and more. And that's why you have a lot of folks who are more on the left who watch this commercial who are like losing their minds because it's like, Look who these people are. They're just being a bunch of hypocrites. But so many of the people who are actually criticizing it on the right, who call themselves Christians, I mean, y'all should be happy that these folks are putting it out there. So I don't see what's the problem here. You see what everybody always has something to complain about. I swear. And I mean, just all of that aside, I don't even necessarily want to bring that into this conversation, but hey, someone's going to mention it. So you can go ahead and talk about it in the comments. But as Christians, we have this way of gatekeeping the faith. And we don't allow people in unless they are doing things exactly the way that we want them to do it. Now, on the flip side of that, there is concern and you should have a right for concern because if this, if you feel that this is interpreted as Jesus will just accept you as however you are, just come as you are and all that stuff, and you don't have to change. I don't think that that's necessarily the message that this organization was trying to put out by way of this commercial. It's just opening the conversation to say, hey, Christ is here. And you may be turned off by people that are Christians that you feel are, quote unquote, persecuting you or oppressing you. But that's not the message of Christ. What's going to happen to all these folks who've seen this commercial? Well, the ones who Christ was knocking on the door to their hearts, they're probably going to go ahead and follow up with that website and see the same exact things that I saw which are laying out the gospel in a very beautiful way. And in the literature on that actual website, it says, well, you know, when you go ahead and you turn yourself over to Christ, you have to become a new creation. That you're going to have to leave your old ways to go ahead and follow his ways. So I think that the hoopla that's been going on about this and the disparaging about this commercial is just for a shock. 
people are just so reactive nowadays that we don't stop and think. So my verdict is, I think this was a great campaign. I think it was a great way to start getting the conversation in the general scope about Christ. It's kind of like a gateway drug in a way. It's like you, you get that little, that little tidbit. And then you might start wanting to go to church. You might start wanting to pray. You might start wanting to pick up your Bible and start reading. You might want to start to find a Bible study. You might want to start to find a group. You might start to want to actually convert or revert your faith because this one little commercial lit that fire inside of you to say, Lord, I'm here and I hear you and I'm ready to come back to you. How can I not support that? You know, maybe I'm just the type of person who likes to see the positive in things. I don't directly go to the negative right away. I try to see and understand what's going on and what's being said and why. I give more the benefit of the doubt. But my opinion is, I think this was a great commercial. However, what is your opinion, your thoughts? Go ahead and post it down below in the comments. Y'all know I love talking about controversial topics. So I got a little playlist here, some other stuff that I was talking about that's happened in the news. Why don't you go ahead and check it out right over here and let me know your thoughts on these. I'll see you over there.